Hello, my name is Rupert Hujaf and I'm the Chairman and Chief Researcher of the Huran Report. Now, often when I'm out with friends, um, sooner or later in the course of the evening, we end up trying to talk about where the economy of tomorrow is coming from. And I suppose it is because as entrepreneurs, we want to somehow predict what's happening tomorrow so that when tomorrow does come, we're not going to see these opportunities pass us by. Now, today I've got a list that I think can really give us an insight, perhaps, into where the economy of tomorrow is coming from. It's um, the 2023 Global Unicorn List put out today in Guangzhou. So why should you be paying attention to a unicorn? Well, perhaps it would help if I defined what a unicorn is. It's a, a startup from the 2000s that's worth a billion US dollars, not a small amount of money, and that hasn't yet gone IPO. And these unicorns are the ones that are disrupting our lifestyles. These unicorns are the ones that are changing the way we live and, uh, and spend our money. It's the companies that the smartest um, capital in the world are looking to invest into and a lot of the sort of top young talent of the world are looking to work in. And so these unicorns definitely deserve your attention. Now, how many unicorns have we found in the world? And, and you might be you know, um, surprised to find out that we've actually got 1,360. That's 300 more than where we were last year. Uh, actually, I didn't expect there to be more unicorns this time uh, this year than last year. I mean, I didn't expect it to be a new world record, um, especially because we've got the uncertainties in the economy. The uh, the whole global economy, you know, with the geopolitical headwinds has slowed. But nonetheless, this last year, we managed to find 300 new unicorns compared to last year. And so, you know, the and if you stand a bit further back and you look at since COVID, well, I mean, since COVID, before COVID, we had like just over about 500 known unicorns in the world. We're at just under 1,400 today. So um, it's been, without a shadow of a doubt, the most dynamic and exciting time for the creation of unicorns in the history of the world. Now, next question is, which countries have the best startup ecosystems? And for this, the way I see it is you can split the world into three. You've got America, which has got 50% of the known unicorns, and 670 at this count. And you've got China with 320, not quite, um, and 320, that's actually more than the next 15 countries combined together. And then you've got rest of the world. <laughs> rest of the world. I mean, there are three main um, regions, I suppose. And rest of the world, you've got India with 70 unicorns now that we know of. Uh, another 70 actually created by Indians, but in America mainly and other, other places. And you've got the UK, where I come from, number four in the world. You've got Germany. And um, Israel this year has overtaken France, uh, but only just by one unicorn, I think and Canada, South Korea, Brazil, and so on. So these are the countries with the most dynamic and exciting startup ecosystems in the world. And actually, if you're looking at where the economies uh, of, uh, uh, which countries, are, economies are going to grow, grow in going forward, and this is an indication as to um, where these economies are going to be um, growing fastest. And the next thing is sort of which industries are these um, unicorns in? Where the industries that have had the most new unicorns this year has been fintech, uh, enterprise software, blockchain, and logistics. They're the big four. But if we were to actually stand back again and look at where the 1,360 unicorns are, are, are mainly, you know, sort of working in, well, it's fintech is number one, and software as a service is number two, e-commerce, AI, health tech, and so on and so forth. So they're the sort of the main industries that uh, these unicorns are. Uh, next, I suppose, is well, which are the, the unicorns leading the pack? You've got um, um, ByteDance. That's the company behind TikTok and Douyin. It's number one in the world in terms of unicorn. It's worth 200 billion US dollars. And then you've got Elon Musk's SpaceX, um, which is worth 140 billion US dollars, give or take. And it's its rocket and satellite startup. I call it a startup. I mean, it's, uh, doing phenomenal stuff. And you've got um, companies like Sheen. Uh, which is a Guangzhou-based um, fast fashion and e-commerce company, um, which is now worth 65 billion US dollars. Actually, in the last year, it's added um, 45 billion US dollars um, to its valuation. I mean, pretty remarkable. And then you've got this company that everybody in the world is talking about. It's um, ChatGBT's um, mothership. It's uh, called OpenAI. It's now worth 20 billion US dollars. It's, again, one of the fastest and growing unicorns in the world and perhaps one that has changed more or that seems to have the potential to change more people's lifestyle than any other uh, unicorn around. It, it downloaded, for example, 100 million 
and it was downloaded 100 million times in just over two months, which is actually the fastest consumer software app download um, sort of milestone in, in, in the history of the world again. And there's so much more to this um, list. I mean, for example, there are 70 unicorns that were created, wait for it, since COVID. So it's not that they became unicorns during COVID. It's like they only started in, in, in COVID and are already unicorns. And I suppose this is because there are certain sectors that have just um, started to fly. You've got the likes of Web 3.0. You've got the likes of AI. We already talked about chat, TBT, and so on. So these sectors are just um, being rocket fueled just in general. Then you've also got this new concept of serial entrepreneurs. So on the one side, you've got the likes of Elon Musk. You know, he's not just created one big company, but he's got actually three unicorns on, on, on this year's list. And you've also got the founders of Uber and the founders of WeWork who've gone out and they've, they've, Uber is still a big company, WeWork is still a big company, but they've gone out and built new businesses. And, and that's the second lot. And then the third um, reason we've managed to get so many new unicorns in, uh, since COVID is because you've got big companies like car companies who are um, hiving off or spinning off their and uh, their EV or their electric car, um, you know, sort of a division. And automatically, because of the size and nature of the big company in the first place, it becomes a unicorn on, on day one. So there you have it. That's a sort of a brief indication as to um, what's going on in the economy of tomorrow. I, I hope that you can draw inspiration from it. And, and perhaps also, you know, uh, you will start building a unicorn today. And, you know, the average age of these unicorns is nine years. So that means based on that, if you start one here in 2023, that means by the year 2032, 32, you will have a billion dollar startup. <laughs> Thank you and good luck. Bye bye.